Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome, everybody. Uh, Manny Pacheco is with us today. How you doing, John? How you doing, Manny? Happy to be on Celebrating Act 2, that's for sure. Manny, <laughs> good to see you. Um, you know, we talk about, with you, we talk about movies old and new. Uh, we talk about different genres. Um, you are a font of knowledge about, and a historian, great historian for Hollywood. But I was wondering, and I'm getting a hint from the hat you're wearing, <laughs> I was wondering if there's a, a, a genre that was popular and, and hasn't been repeated or, well, I'm just wondering. <laughs> You're probably asking me, uh, is there a, a popular genre today that might have been popular in the past? And that, without a doubt, it has to be film noir. You know? Oh, art. Art. I think that's what I was asking, wasn't yeah. I? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was asking. I wish I could wear a hat like Dick Powell or 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 Humphrey Bogart or maybe uh, Alan Ladd. I'm that trying would be to great. get. I'm trying to get in the spirit myself. Yeah. Well, let me. <laughs> if you're going to be in film noir, you got to be in the shadows. Yeah. So why not? There you oh, go. Oh, that's film noir. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Now yeah. I'm in the shadows, and uh, th that's the way it was filmed. <laughs> film noir was a very popular 1940s post-war genre that basically. Uh, took the Italian cinema realism and brought it to the United States. It was basically a, a type of uh, film where there are no real good guys and no real bad guys. Everybody lives in the gray area. And um, the endings weren't as, as friendly and warm and fuzzy. And the, the women weren't uh, necessarily good for your health. Police departments were, <laughs> police departments were, uh, yeah, they called them Femme Patels, by the way. Police departments were corrupt, as was the banking industry and other corporate uh, entities. And the gangsters were, were part of a, a lifestyle born out of desperation and being uh, subjected to the uh, lower classes of life. Now, that all, of course, is true. It was the... Uh, what do you call that? The, the literary bent of film noir was the anti-hero and uh, you couldn't tell the good from the bad and all that. But uh, film noir, when you say that to me, I think of the hat, the lighting. Pull your hat down so your shadows, your shadows are on your eyes. Yeah, that's film noir, right? And mm -hmm. the, the lighting, f to me, film noir was lighting and mood more than more than the story, although you're right, the story. So you got to have the story to, to complement the light, the, the yeah. lighting and the mood. I mean, you got to have the, the the cobblestone streets and the and the uh, and the fog coming from the bay. And, yeah. And, and you have very uh, questionable people walking up and down the the late nights, you know, uh, sidewalks. Yeah. Uh, to at uh, two a.m. You know, and, and you you know nothing good is going to happen if you're out that late walking the streets. So. Uh, <laughs> You know, and I think it's popular today is because we live in a time where there's a lot of angst. You know, we have real uh, issues, medical and health issues, political issues, uh, economic issues that has created a, um, a bounty for the idea of the reemergence of film noir. And it didn't hurt that, that, that Turner Classic Movies found the perfect individual to host a weekend film noir uh, tableau. Eddie Muller is just absolutely the perfect host to bring back th these these classic and in many cases uh, B movies, movies that were made on the cheap with language just like that. Lots of slang. You know, the women were dolls and femme fatales. Uh, the the guys were mugs. Uh, the police, you know, they were. Uh, what were, what were they? They were uh, uh, questionable. Yeah, they were questionable, but they had nicknames as well. Uh, but, you know, they, they, it, it, so today those movies have reemerged as a very, very popular genre. And the good news is that we're, we're, we're digging deep into the film noir genre. There were literally hundreds of movies that were made, um, not just the obvious ones like Double Indemnity or The Postman Always Rings Twice or The Asphalt Jungle or the Maltese Falcon. 
there were there were movies that were uh, that were made that not not as uh, famous titles, but boy, were they good. The Dark Corner comes to mind. The Strange Loves of Martha Ivers is another great story that not as popular as 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 the ones I mentioned before. Uh, and just a number of them. Where the Sidewalk Ends. What a great title. Detour. Oh, you know, nothing is going to good. If, if Nothing happens good if you have to take a detour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Manny, there's an interesting phenomenon, I think, that uh, uh, a recent phenomenon that uh, contributes to the rise or the re-rise of film noir. And that is uh, graphic novels, uh, um, animated um, well, they're not always animated. They're they're often now done live actors, but but uh, comic books, mm -hmm. um, Marvel comics. When they went into film, they took the the film noir lighting, if you will, and the mood of of uh, of film noir into their comics that were had always been in their comics, adult graphic novels, and they put it into television and film. And so some of these superhero films um, and many of the, the films and television series that are um, – they're about superheroes in a, in a real world, you know, as if superheroes really lived here. Well – And, and they're, all, they're all film noir influenced. I would say so because a lot of the superheroes did have angst. I mean, there's there's no there's no doubt that Stan Lee and Jack Kirby lived in a stint, uh, they grew up in a film noir atmosphere. So yeah, why not have problems for Peter Parker who plays Spider Man or yeah. or Tony Stark who plays uh, Iron Man? You're going to yeah. give them real problems, and and that's okay. I don't see a problem with that. Uh, what I what I will say is that there has been some success with post film noir films. Chinatown comes to mind. The music of Chinatown, by the way. My gosh! If that doesn't if that doesn't scream film noir, I don't know what does. Uh, the 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 movie, of course, with Faye Dunaway and uh, Jack Nicholson. But really, those cheaply made uh, film noirs of the '40s and '50s. And let me just say that film noirs were popular between 1941 and about 1959. The last film noir technically was probably Touch of Evil, great film noir with uh, Orson Welles. And uh, uh, Charlton Heston. But to me, so, to me, uh, uh, though, uh, uh, having watched a lot of uh, uh, what I consider to be film noir uh, on television uh, growing up, and we had a black and white television during the, that day, so it really worked well. Uh, was uh, things like uh, well, Maltese Falcon was definitely uh, number one on my list, but uh, uh, Citizen Kane to me uh, fell right into that. You may have other genres it fits into, but just the, the, the shadows and not knowing what's going on. But there were dozens of movies with James Cagney, uh, 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 Edward G. Robinson, all the um, uh, gangster movies. Uh, well, they just, they they just, pull, they just uh, 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 churned them out, and it seemed that they were all of the same genre. Well, they predate film noir, but of course they set the table. Uh, the, the James Cagney, the Edward G. Robinson, they're setting the table because they have the writers who are eventually going to write fabulous film noir. Uh, you know, absolute Dashiell Hammett is writing these great stories in the 1930s, and of course then he falls right in with, with the Maltese Falcon. Uh, Raymond Chandler. I mean, these were individuals who were writing great stories, and uh, eventually they saw that uh, life isn't black and white, there aren't just good guys and bad guys, that there is a real class struggle that exists that was born out of the Great Depression and fell right into a world war. So they're going to write about the struggles of everyday life. And sometimes, you know, no matter how hard you try to get out of being in poverty, and maybe you take a shortcut, that shortcut is always going to lead to one, one thing, and it usually involves a shovel and, uh, and a headstone. You know, Manny, uh, you you originally mentioned the the thematic uh, uh, notations of um, film noir, and I wondered, given you just mentioned the '30s, these guys were writing uh, certain kinds of films, but if film noir started in '40s and '50s, how did the studios react? How how because film noir didn't have a happy ending, you know, at at best it had a kind of a neutral ending. Um, how did the 
how did the studios allow film noir with their with the lack of classic Hollywood happy ending? How did, how did the studios react to that? Well, you had to have the right actors. I mean, MGM had Robert Taylor, so you could put him in a film noir too. But MGM's not known for film noirs. And as, as Art alluded, Warner Brothers was known for their gritty gangster films, but that's not exactly film noir. And James Cagney was not re pre pre predisposed to do a film noir. So the film noirs ended up being a real popular uh, in 20th Century Fox and at Paramount. And and all those you know smaller studios you know over at uh, uh, at um, RKO RKO would put out uh, film noirs, uh, so yeah Paramount would would put out some great great film noirs. Twentieth Century Fox had of course the great Alfred Newman pr producing scores for film noir, and and one of his best was a nineteen thirty one piece that they used in seven different productions called Street Scene. And I don't know if you you might recognize the song. I'll I'll, I'll hum a little bit of it so you might you might recognize it. It's it, the movie will start da 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 da. When you hear that theme, you know you're about to watch a memorable film noir. So there you go. And of course, you have to have the right actors. Like I mentioned, Robert Taylor at MGM, but you have to have you know Alan Ladd. Uh, Veronica Lake. Uh, you, uh, it would help to have William Bendix. Mm. He was always really dependable in a film noir. Yeah. Robert Mitchum. Absolutely, Robert Mitchum's uh, career was born out of his work in film noir. Yeah. Um, there was also your femme fatales, Elizabeth Scott, and... Uh, and uh, Classic. Uh, yeah, I mean, really just great, great... Uh, uh, jo uh, Joan Greer. I mean, there were just these great... Uh, classic people who are who really made their career i mean kirk douglas his first couple of films were actual film noirs the first appearance he made was in the strange loves of martha ivers so uh, you definitely uh, you, you can't discount you know uh, uh barbara stanwyck in in those great film noirs lana turner did a film noir uh, uh, uh john garfield who was you know born out of the traditional gangsters excelled during the film noir period there were so many great actors who really made film noir work. Peter Lorre, believe it or not, was terrific in film noirs. And so you got to look at the stars and then you got to look at also the, the character actors who were just, for my money, you, you don't get better than William Bendix. So, he was the perfect will, film noir actor. So getting back to it, it's, it's almost like a film uh, uh, actor studio, uh, always this is a series of questions. Uh, and uh, lately, uh, it's always been uh, uh, my interest to find out because I can then sort through uh, a, a couple of films to watch. Do you have a favorite two or three uh, film noir? Oh, absolutely. But, you know, they're, they're the, the predictable ones. I mean, Double Indemnity is, is not only my, one of my favorite film noirs, it's probably one of my favorite films of all time. Fred McMurray and Barbara Stanwyck, Edward G. Robinson steals the film. I also love The Asphalt Jungle, just a terrific film. Uh, Sam Jaffe is in it, and uh, 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 S S S Sterling Hayden. Uh, just a terrific, terrific film. Um, and that was directed by John Huston, who also did The Maltese Falcon. Those are my, my two favorites. But not to forget the question that John originally asked way back when, why is there such a popularity now today? I truly believe that um, that the, uh, the the audience has clamored for the return of film noir. There are now festivals that celebrate film noir. Turner Classic Movies has devoted Saturday evening to a good film noir. Um, there's just a, lots of avenues for us to re-enjoy, re-imagine film noir. There's a movies channel that takes all of Sunday night and plays maybe five or six film noirs in a row. So my Sundays are always set because I'm watching film noirs I've never seen before, and they're really good. I mean, just absolutely yeah. riveting on your seat, uh, tense. And uh, it, it reminds me of my childhood when I went to bed after watching the FBI on TV. <laughs> you're, going to bed, you're going to bed just a little ruffled. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a little bit frightened, you know? I uh, love film noir. I love the style. I love the, and you're right, the storylines and things. Manny, thank you. Yeah, you bet. Uh, what, what would a classic film noir ending be, Manny, with the hat? What would, 
uh, probably with a couple of shots, uh, uh, bullet shots in my back. And uh, I'm holding a, 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 I'm holding a Johnny Walker red in my hand just mm. before I fall. Okay. Well, everybody imagine that. And, uh, I could have been big. But why don't you, why don't you hold up that glass with the, the make-believe glass? Boom. Got him. All right. Well, that's, that's the end of Manny. Now there's nothing left but to see him on his website. So yes. Hollywood.com. Absolutely. And of Manny, course, we'll, we'll, I'm sorry. I would say and you can get my books at, uh, at Amazon. Forgotten Hollywood book series. So absolutely. Yes. Excellent. We love them. We'll see you in the next film noir. Okay. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.